In the last episode, we talked about how to create a database inside phpMyAdmin. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how to create a table inside a database. Now, just to kind of remind you guys, one table stores one type of data inside a website, meaning that we might have one table that stores information regarding users. We might have another table that stores information regarding a post inside a forum. So we can have many different tables inside a single database. Now, as you guys can see, I do actually have one table up here, which I created as an example for you guys to see it. And you guys will not have this one. The only thing you guys will see when you do actually click your PHP lessons database is create table, which is this part down here. Now, when it comes to creating tables inside PHP MyAdmin, there's two different ways you can do it. You can do it the easy way and you can do it the hard way. Now, in our case, we're not gonna do it the easy way because we do actually need to do it the hard way inside our PHP code when we do actually get back to the PHP part, which means that I see no reason for us to actually learn how to do it the easy way and the hard way. So we might as well just do it the hard way and it's good practice for you guys. So we should do it the hard way, you know, anyways. Now, the way we can actually go ahead, well, let's actually show you guys the example I created here. If I do actually go into the table I created inside my database, you guys can see I do actually have two types of data inside my table. Down here, I do actually have two, uh, two lines of information. I have a user called Jane23B, which has a password as another password. I also have another user called Danny948A, which has another password as well. Now, each of these users has a unique ID, just so we have you know an, a unique number we can refer to for each of the users. Now, this is an example of a table. And one thing I do want to you know, point out is that when we have data inside a table, it's gonna be split up into columns and rows, meaning that the columns are gonna be the IDs, the username, the password, which I created here, and the rows are gonna be the data that has been put into the columns. Now, each table is gonna have one column, which has to be some kind of unique uh, we, we call it a primary key, which means that it has to store information that cannot be identical to any of the rows. Meaning that if my, for example, my user called Jane has an ID as one, no other user can have the ID as one as well. And this is something all tables must have. They must have a primary ID, which cannot be identical to any other kind of row. So knowing this, and I know this is already getting a little bit hairy, uh, we're going to go ahead and try and create a table ourselves. And in the next episode, we will actually try creating the actual data that goes inside each table. So let's actually go ahead and click on PHP lessons over here on the left side. So we make sure we're all the way back in the beginning. And now we're going to go up to the SQL tab up here in the top, which is where we're going to create our tables the hard way. Now, the easy way would actually be just to go down here and say name and write something and decide how many columns and let, well, let me actually show you guys how this looks like. If I do actually give this table a name, it could be posts and I could decide, okay, I need four columns. I'm gonna click go. Now we get this little thing where we have our rows and well, actually these are gonna be our columns, meaning that we can have one column that's, you know, has information regarding um, topic of the post. It could also be the content of the post and it could be the date the post was made. And then we can actually decide what type of information, like what type of data it is. Now, even though this is the easy way, like I said, it can be a little bit uh, confusing with all the drop downs, with all the different information we have in here, if you're new at this. So let's actually go ahead and go back by clicking on PHP lessons over here on the left side and go up to the SQL tab at the very top. Now in here, we can actually go ahead and create SQL code, which will do something with the database. Now, SQL code is a different type of coding language that deals with databases. Now, this is actually the code that you need to know because you will be using this inside your PHP code as well, which is why we're gonna do this the hard way, like I said. So inside the SQL tab here, we can write code. I'm actually gonna go ahead and zoom in for you guys a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and create the code that creates a table inside our database called PHP lessons. So as long as you click on PHP lessons, we already selected which database to write the code in. So inside the coding field here, we're gonna go ahead and say create space table 
space. And then we need to decide on some kind of name for this table. In our case, we could call this one posts, just because. And then we're gonna say parentheses, semicolon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and push down my parentheses a little bit, at least, you know, one side of the parentheses. So we can write something in between here. So in between here, we need to write what we need to have inside a column inside our table. And the first column is gonna be our primary ID or like our primary key it's called. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and call this one ID. I'm gonna say space, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give it some kind of a data type, which there are actually quite a few of, but we're just gonna talk about some of the basic ones in this episode. So for the ID, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one int, which stands for integer, which is a number. I'm gonna say parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we need to tell it how many numbers that can be inside this ID. In our case, I'm just gonna write 11, because why not? Um, I don't think we'll ever get to 11, because there's actually quite a few numbers in there. It's 11 numbers after each other. So unless there's like a ton of posts, like millions of posts inside our website, I don't think we're ever gonna surpass this. So I'm just gonna say 11 for now, space, then I'm gonna go ahead and call this one not null afterwards, which basically means that this one cannot be empty. We need to have a data inside this column, otherwise it's not gonna save this information inside the database. Okay, that's basically what not null means. Space, and now we're gonna say primary key, capitalized letters. And this means that this is gonna be the primary key that no other rows can have the same number as. So now we need to make sure that nobody has the same number as the first person or like no users or posts has the same ID as each other. And the way we're gonna do that is by writing space. And then we're gonna say auto underscore increment, which basically means that each time a new post has been made, it will increase our ID by one, which means that our integer is gonna start out at one then when another post come in, it's gonna be named number two as an ID. And when another post come in, it's gonna be named as three. So it's just gonna keep counting upwards, which is gonna prevent us from having the same, you know, number inside our ID. Now, after we're done with this column, we're gonna write comma. We're gonna go down to the next line. And now we can actually start writing the actual information we want regarding the post. So for the first information, we could, for example, say we want a um, topic. Actually, no, let's say subject instead, because that makes sense. So we have a subject of the post, space. Now, instead of having numbers, because int is just numbers, we want characters inside our subject, meaning that we want something called va cha, like so, space. Actually, no, well, let's put something inside the parentheses first. Let's actually go ahead and say we want a maximum of 128 characters inside the subject. So if the person actually writes a huge subject line that's more than 128 characters long, it will not save this information, okay? After this, we're gonna go ahead and say not null, comma, next line. That's all we need, because the only reason we have so much written on the first line is because this one is a primary key, and because it's a primary key, we cannot have it repeating itself at any point, which is why we added auto increment. So after this one, we can actually go ahead and just copy paste what we have here to the next line, and I'm gonna change subject to content. Now, this one is gonna be set to Vacha as well, but let's actually go ahead and increase the number because the content can actually be pretty long inside a post. Let's go ahead and write a thousand. Again, we don't. We also want to have not null. I'm gonna go down to the next line. And then we're gonna go ahead and say date. Because what if we want to have the date when the post was actually made? So after we write date, we're gonna change the data type to something called date time. And then we can actually go ahead and delete our parentheses because we, we don't actually need that inside date time. Now, what this one does is that it tells us the date in year, month, day, and then the time as uh, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, if I remember correctly. And this one is also gonna be set as not null. Now, 
if you guys have questions regarding, you know, how are we going to make sure that the correct type of information goes into these columns, um, we'll take that at a later point when we do actually start writing the actual stuff. So don't worry about it. For now, let's just go ahead and focus on learning how to create a table. So let's say this is all the information I want regarding a post. Now you want to make sure that the last line does not have a comma behind it because the comma is only going to be in between each column and there's no column after this one. So we're just going to go ahead and leave out the comma. After we have this, a good advice for you guys is to actually save or like copy this code and paste it inside maybe a blank file here where you can paste it in and save it for a later point. Because maybe you do actually screw something up at some point and you have to delete the table. And instead of having to write everything again, you can just go ahead and paste it in from a document or something. So after we have this, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. We can go ahead and click go down here in the corner. And as you guys can see, MySQL returned an empty result set, which means there was no errors. So after we created this, we can actually go down to our PHP lessons and see we have another table called post. Well, you guys are going to have one table now. I'm going to have one called user as well, just because I created an example. But for you guys, you're going to have one called post. So if you go ahead and click it, you guys can see that there's nothing in here. We have no data. And this is actually how it looks like when it's empty. And just to show you guys a comparison, this is how it looks like when you have data inside a table, because I do actually have something inside my user table here. So this is basically how you create a table. In our next episode, we're going to talk about how to actually fill in data inside the tables here. And I do realize that some of you guys may have some questions. I, in the beginning, databases can be a little bit confusing when it comes to actually creating the tables. But the more we do actually get into this, you guys will actually, you know, get the hang of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.